right to my gravy granules. I wanted to do this for a while, but there are some videos on my channel which I talked about what I would like to see in Dynasty Warriors 9, and I think now is the prime opportune moment to uh, respond to them. And uh, let's have a good old cringe um, <laughs> at this absolute joke of a video. I say a joke, I mean my expectations on what I thought Dynasty Warriors 9 would be were sort of shattered. Um, yeah, I <laughs> back when I used to have optimism for this game uh, before they even announced it, but, you know... It should be some fun, uh, you know, these are the two videos we're going to cover. Back when I used to have Makise Karisu as the uh, channel picture, I might revert back to it, or I might go for Kai sometime, I don't know. Uh, yeah, back when I used to be optimistic. But, yeah, I am uh, getting drunk in this video. It's the only way I can sort of deal with having to uh, listen to my own voice sometimes. So if there are some weird cuts, that'll be because I'm getting another drink. So uh, l I will be pausing for right this video as well. So uh, <sighs> let's begin. Yo, this probably isn't the kind of video expecting from this channel, but it's something I've wanted to do for a while. News of a new Dynasty Warriors game is approaching and has been posted online. This is around New Year's, by the way, and it had the following message. Jesus Christ, like, the amount of times I smack my lips in this video is uh, a bit ridiculous. I never bothered to um, edit them out. And this is when I had a really crappy microphone bought from my local Aldi store. Good old Aldi. Yes, and I am that arrogant that I go and like my own videos. See, only eight dislikes. I bet somebody will go and dislike it now, but yeah, I... Uh, used to smack my lips quite a lot or never you know never bothered to uh, edit them out and also i keep going mm in my latest videos i've noticed which is a bit annoying last year we welcomed the 15th anniversary of the dynasty warriors series really bloody hell like think about this this was 2016 it's now 2018 and that can't be right because last year it was meant to celebrate 20 years so i'm not sure what i was thinking oh that can't be right but you know oh it must have been 15 years since i honestly don't know how strange i must be must you know have so some high level you know of retardation i don't know and we were not able to deliver the news fans were expecting for that. <laughs> oh my god, the news fans are expecting. Yes, I know. The, the, Koei seem to be a company that are more interested in giving fans news of games than actually, you know, delivering a decent product. How funny. We are very sorry. This year we are preparing to be able to make a big announcement. So please look forward to it with a picture of the lovely woo ladies in red dresses, or should I say woo ladies, or something. Wow, I didn't even show the picture. Man, I'm amazing. Yes, and the cringy jokes still continue to this day, two, <laughs> two years later. I do like how this was only, th what, two years and three days ago. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite good at telling the time, it turns out. So with that, here's some ideas. Story mode. To appease the people that, you know, piss and moan about how great the personal stories in Dynasty Warriors 5 are. They're not, by the way. Uh, just throwing that out there. Have the stories told in the Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8 way, and but have one or two changes. Uh, firstly, pick up your character before the narration of the next stage, then the character that narrates narrates it can uh, build up to the next battle, including the events relating to that character. For example, Xu Huang explaining how he joins Wei. In previous games, he just sort of joins in like that friend everyone has at school that no one invites to events. They just sort of end up there. That's um, that's quite interesting. Like, I I still believe that should be the way they uh, sort of do the story. Have the I'm not sure if I'd say I sort of predicted it or I sort of said what um they were going to do but 
it's the characters themselves don't narrate it. You get a narration from the narrator uh, uh, introducing the character, which I do. That is one of the things I do like about Dynasty Wars Nine. You know, is a shit heap of a game with very little personal personalization on the character stories other than the other characters which were done you know fairly well i mean lu bu lu ling chi and chen gong all had the same story which is a bit shit but you know so you know there's always that i still stand by that to uh, pick the character after the narration and then have scenarios like they did in samurai warriors 4 but vastly improve upon them and by that i don't mean have everyone standing around circle jerking <laughs> wow like i like that it's like improve upon the samurai warriors four scenes and dynasty wars 9 went the opposite way the scenes in dynasty wars 9 are so bad like i i honestly cannot sympathize with anybody that says this is the best story they've ever done like who the fuck are these people it's it's fucking embarrassing. It really is. It, people saying this is the best the story's ever been are just, you know, clamouring for stuff to enjoy in this game. I honestly think that. it's. I will give it one thing. It goes into the most detail. That is the one thing I think people are clamouring to. It's the best the story's ever been. Has it? Fuck. Presentation, character development, uh, just everything... Is is the lowest it's probably ever been, other than you know the PS2 games, which had, well, you know, three and uh, four have the least you know character characterization, but you know you sort of expect that from a PS2 game. A game's fifteen, well, you know, fifteen to seventeen years down the line, you don't expect that, do you? It is what it is. Bloody boring. For either of those situations, cutscenes or the camps in previous games would be effective, but add a bit more welly to it. The occasional arm wave or head shake isn't really going to cut it, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to cut it, and they still did that. And, I mean, people now die sitting down for most of this game. Han Dang sit dies sitting down, Fa Zhang, um... Who's the other one? Gan Ning. Gan Ning doesn't even die in stage now. Shamok doesn't do anything. Oh, spoilers. Oh, wait, you can't spoil a game that's already been told several times. Whatever. Just add some more life to it. Uh, another thing I'd like to see would be all forces have their own stories, similar to Lubu in 8XL. In general, what I'd like to see across four main stories would be more stages, uh, more hypothetical, Hypotheticals need more attention. Well, I th I'm not sure if they got more stages. So uh, Jin uh, did actually get one Ling's Rebellion back, which was, you know, all right. It's I was writing my review and I couldn't actually remember that stage was back. And then I had to go and sort of replay it and I was like, oh, it is back. But I'm I'm not sure if Wang Yuanji gets it. I think she might join. No, I don't think she has it. Or it was so unrememberable that I didn't even like play it. Like didn't didn't even really pay attention to it. But it is in the game. I can assure you, One Ling's Rebellion is back in the game. Which, you know, wow. Um, they do still cut some stages though. It it's weird. Like they they put some stages in and then they also cut some as well, which, or I say cut. I mean they made them part of the overall. Um, thing. So the Battle of Puyong is now actually part of the Battle of Dingtao. I think that's what it is. There, some of the stages are you know put together, which is you know a bit gay. And to be better written, I think they were great when they first came out. But looking back, nearly three years later, they're pretty bad. Oh, I should mention, yeah, hypotheticals uh, was something I uh, forgot we watched. So yes, we didn't get any. Well, I mean, we we didn't get any. We did get the made-up stage of, you know, Lu Bei's escape, which I'm not sure if that actually happened. I don't, to be honest, I don't really fucking care either. It's, I thought initially it was a Sun, Sun Shang Xiang, 
unique stage, but it's not. Um, I did Lian Shi's story as well, and this and that as well, which, you know, annoyed me. I, the, the lack of personalization is, it, it really is heartbreaking in a way. And um, I, I'm not sure what video I'm going to mention this in, so I'll mention it now. I've talked to several people. I'm on a Discord server, which um, I might leave the link to below. We said that the Woo ladies, the Woo ladies, like I'm going to read that joke in the video we're currently watching, they're all uh, very waifu ish. So, you know, Da Chiao is very much, oh, Sun Sir, I love you. And so is Xiao Qiao. And so is uh, Sun Shang Shang, for that matter. Like, oh, Liu Bei, he's the best thing in my life. We said, um, we honestly think they should change Sun Shang Shang to be the one uh, female character that actually despises their husband. Like, she's forced into the arranged marriage, which, you know, would actually make quite a contrast and be quite interesting. You could have very uh, good personalization on her. Like, she's there only because like she's forced to do it and it would work into the family thing as well for uh Wu like she does it because she wants to help her brother and stuff like that it's it would have been a really cool thing for them to do and it would be her going back to her PS2 sort of roots in a way i mean i know i don't know they sort of ruined it in for XL i mean it was it was a bit toned down but they after that, I suppose in 5 she did go back to Wu for Yi Ling and then they sort of ruined her a bit more, I'd say. Uh, I don't know. In 6... Well, I don't know. I can't remember 6. You know what? I might even start playing Dynasty Warriors 6. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 9 has made me appreciate the other games more. <laughs> it's made It rekindled my love for the games, at least. I'll give it that. It's a shit game, but it made me do that, so whatever. Shu and Wu in particular are make this go full screen. Shu's is especially annoying because it didn't actually have the manpower to achieve that story. And the yellow turbans are in it. Actually, I will give them one thing. Um, the writing of Dynasty Wars 9, uh, Shu, is, you know, it's alright. It's It makes them look like just the complete gullible ring nut cunts they are. Well, except maybe the end, they're like... Oh, we could have broken through and defeated Wei, but oh no, the guy, the guy pulls the order. No, pulls a fast one and makes us think Liu Bei, no Lu Shan, gave the order to come back. Like that. Let's be honest, they didn't have the manpower. Like they could not have won. I know it's their story, and you've got to make it so. Oh, you, you know, you're the good guys, and you're gonna win. But <sighs> Jesus Christ, it's that bit. That bit pissed me off. Hunting yellow turbans. Might as well have fucking Doctor Who join them. <laughs> I still I still like that joke. It it's um disappointing the the writing of the hypotheticals in eight were pretty bad. I do like they did add them. And uh, you know, Dynasty Wars four was one big hypothetical thing, but yeah, that is one of one of my complaints with eight. I mean in terms of the, w the structure of the game, it was very well done. You know, it's one of my complaints of nine. There's no... Uh, you're not encouraged to fight people at all. Um, in terms of, like, what they drop on the ground. Either. So, you know, you defeat an enemy in Dynasty Warriors 9. They'll drop gold. Gold becomes useless quite quickly. Whereas, you know, the weapon system in Dynasty Warriors 8 was you know you got weapons for killing people and weapons were things you could equip they're not ones you know you have to get three skull scrolls and then you get one and you can't sell it you know i'm not sure why i'm going on this tangent and with woo it was oh yeah we all just get on like bffs for life I I, i'm not actually that bothered by it now but it it did annoy me how um I'm just trying to think now how sort of idealistic it was, but I, I sort of realise it's to go with the whole family thing, and you know they they did them so you had you know the the best outcome for each of the 
kingdoms. You know, Wu got on with everybody, Shu got on with Wu, and that was it. Uh, Wei didn't get on with anybody. They just destroyed everybody. And Jin, you had... They were united by the person who wasn't their initial leader, which I do quite like. So it wasn't, you know, Sima Yi takes over the land. It was, you know, his son. Or it wasn't the person who actually, you know, fully united the land, which is, you know, contrast to how Sima Zhao takes over the land by defeating Lu Shan. So, you know, I, I did quite like that. I suppose they thought it'd, be, it'd feel weird if all four stories ended up with them conquering the whole land. Which is literally just what I said, so I should have <laughs> kept watching, but whatever. Regarding the lack of the story, I thought it was funny that Wu was wiped out in a single stage in both Wei and Jin's hypothetical stories. Exactly. That is one of the things they should have built upon, which they uh, didn't. They didn't go and have any hypotheticals at all. But I digress. In ways they they would have had more power, manpower as Liu Bei had no home, but whatever, I guess. What the fuck is the tone and pacing of that part of the video? I mean, this was fully scripted, and that is just you know. Path I mean, this was fully scripted, and that is just you know pathetic. And the audio levels aren't mixed or mastered. I mean, this this video I'm making now is you know going to be piss poor, but whatever. Only three minutes, and we've gone on such a tangent. I don't even know what time it was when we started bloody hell we've been going what like 15 minutes maybe even longer i've found a complete list of all the battles found in romance of the three kingdoms which will be included in the description is it i don't know if it's included in the description uh it is no yes it is holy shit i did actually include it it's not like they can complain about the lack of battles to pick from Another thing I'd like to add would be to have the way story finish on Heifei Castle and not Farm Castle. As well, I'll give them that. They did actually increase the later way story. So, you know, they did have the continuous story. It, it didn't just, you know, stop it because of the, you know, structure of the game. You know, each character lives their life, as it were. You know, some characters do live a bit longer than they should, but whatever. Sao Pi's reign isn't highlighted at all. That may make the stories unequal in length, but it's it's uh, tough shit really. Then if Wu and Shu don't do many battles, uh, to quote Dark Souls means get good. Get good in battles, guys. Cringe. Another thing would be to expand the Jin story arc to include the, include the fall of Wu. They're didn't do that but you know i'm not going to complain that they're, they're not gonna they're not gonna do it are they the cast is too bloated as it is i mean they're on 90 characters the ones they added uh i think the way additions were good um that's about it really the gin edition didn't do anything she didn't add anything which is, you know, annoying. I, I like how she fits the heavy weapons girl thing. And, you know, I like her personality, but she didn't fucking add anything to the story. I mean, Man Chong did. Shun Yo did. Um, Sao Shu, to a lesser extent, didn't really add anything. Um, who's the other one? I can't even remember. Uh, Cheng Pu was pretty good, actually. I'll give him that. Zhou Sang was shit. The uh, Hua Xiong doesn't add anything, really. He's just there. Not sure how his personal story is going to be. Dong Bai, you know, she didn't really add much. I do like how she, well, I do like how she's in Dong Zhuo's story and Lu Bu's, but I mean, in the overarching story, she doesn't fucking add anything. Zhu Sheng was a joke. He's in one cutscene. Is that it? Okay. And Zhou Sang, just so you know, Guan Yu worshipper, essentially fills the same role as Guan Ping. Why? I'm actually getting a bit depressed about this now. Fucking hell. Just late away at the moment and not really Jin. Well, on paper anyway. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know, Jin are just late away. Yeah, and so they add a character who doesn't do any Jin story at all. Good one, guys.
Man Chong does more. Man Chong basically does more Jin story than fucking her, and he's a way character. Regarding hypotheticals, I'd like to see more routes outside of the main one. Maybe not as long, say about three stages. He didn't do any. And five or six for the main hypothetical route. Here are some examples of these mini hypothetical routes. For Wei, Shu gets destroyed at Changban, so it's just Yu versus Wu. Marteng's plot. Chang Can we just appreciate how Changban is actually a battle this time? Like, it's not. Well, I mean, in the sense that it's a traditional battle, as in they just literally sit there and wait for wait to die. Liu Bei just doesn't retreat at all. Like, there's no sense of urgency in that battle. Zhang Fei is miles away from anybody, so it doesn't feel like he's actually preventing anybody from, you know, reaching Liu Bei. To kill Cao Cao works, so you can, so can play his way. And I, I like how I made the same sort of stutter as <laughs> as they do in the game. I mean, they say you are the thousand league pawn of the Cao family. Okay. Or is that the joke? Or he refers to his cow shoe instead of sow shoe. Whatever. Sai P. Lu Bu joins Shai Tsai. Losing the Battle of Guandu. That'd be interesting. If Yuan Shu isn't killed and is a major power with the help of Sun Tzu. For Wu, uh, Sun Jian joins Dong Zhua and then rebels. Well, he was, he was asked to join Dong Zhua in the book be interesting to see if he actually did that. There was a scenario in 8XL that he sort of did that, but whatever. Uh, Sun Tzu living past his death and still leads Wu. Sun Jian leads Wu without dying. Uh, Sun Shang Jiang not getting married to Liu Bei, so Zhou Yu's plan to split the land in two works. For Shu, they set up Jing province. I still want to see all these things I should mention, like Sun Jian um, being a completely different character, I should I should have mentioned this in this video, but I mean you know I don't have that foresight two years down, uh, two years into the past. Like if I don't think they would ever do it because Sun Jian would be a fundamentally different character if he did join Dong Zhua, as it were. Whereas the other things still make the characters the same people basically. Well, I mean, Sun Shang Shang, if she didn't marry Liu Bei, would be fitting into the, you know, oh, she doesn't like Liu Bei thing, but whatever. I'm, you know, I still want to see all these things, with, you know, some exceptions. Prince's base and mainly battle the Sun family. Zhu Ge Liang survives the Battle of Wu Zhang Plains. Huang Zhong dies at Mount Ding Juan in... Bit of a weird noise. But whatever. Xiao Yuan and Lu and Shu loses that battle. Tao Qian doesn't die, and Yu Bei and Co stay under him for longer. Yu Bei is joined by Guan Yu at Guan Du. And These examples, right? Guan Du. Uh, you don't even do as Guan Yu. You immediately leave his forces. You're like, oh, I'm going to pay my debt to Cao Cao. It's been paid. I'm leaving. Okay. And um. Their service to Tao Qian um, is so unrememberable, un or if that the word, like, I don't remember any of it. Like, <sighs> people say the story's the best. I don't, I honestly don't remember any of it. It's, that's how unengaging the story of this game is. The Just the presentation is so bad. Like, I can still remember... You know, Sha Hu Dun going up to Guan Yu at the end of Fan Castle. Because they stand there, and then the rain falls down, and it hits their blades, and then they go and f slash each other. And it just looks so awkward, the positioning of Sha Hu Dun holding his scimitar. Because in Dynasty Warriors 7, he has the, you know, normal sword model. And it, ha and it actually replaces the sword model... In the cutscene with his actual one. I mean, they based him around a sword model he doesn't actually equip in the game. But, you know, whatever. That, so, you know, the cutscene's wrong, but I digress. Now, saying all these things is nice. 
I think you have to force players into completing the original story first. <laughs> oh yeah, saying all these things is nice. You know, you can say that about anything really though. So the historical ending before unlocking any of these hypotheticals. Otherwise there'll be too much confusion with new players. Uh, maybe a note before you start your story, like when it says, when you try and start Jin's story. I, I like how sort of... Um they did do that in Dinosaur Wars 9, you know, you have to progress through the story to unlock new characters. You ha you know, you have to complete a chapter so you're not getting, you know, sort of a mixed um, reception. And then Koei went and patched in a thing about characters. So, you know, as soon as you complete the tutorial, you unlock all shoe characters, you know, if you do it as Lube. Good one. Oh, I, I work 10 hour shifts. I can't. I can't be bothered to unlock everybody to unlock my favourite character. Right? So? What do I care? Oh, I can't be bothered to play through the rest of The Last of Us. I'm going to get to the end where, you know, I'm not even going to spoil it, but that does happen. Oh, I can't be bothered to play through Fallout 4 to find out that my son is the enemy. Like... Who fucking thinks that? Same fucking principle, isn't it? <sighs> All the other three, it does say pick the other three. Otherwise, you fucking don't know what will be going on. Why is the audio so low here? But whatever, might mi might master it in when I edit this video, which I don't think I bothered to do. Uh, this is going to be a really long shot, but historical and romance of the Three Kingdoms options for story mode. <laughs> of course they didn't do that. They didn't even do, like, romance of the Three Kingdoms stuff for some of the bits of the story. Didn't even do, you know, Lubu versus the Three Brothers. Excuse me. So you can choose if the game plays like the events in the book or an actual history. So, it so historical things would include like Hua Xiong dying to Sun Jian and Yu Bei and, not and Co not appearing until Shu Province and Sun Xiang Xiang going back to Wu when her mother's ill. Uh, another thing would be uh, to have characters change due to the story. For example, in 8, uh, at the Battle of Baidi Castle, uh, Ma Chao joins the Alliance because his father well, isn't killed by Sao Tso, so it doesn't really make sense for him being there. He still has a vendetta against Sao Tso, although that never happens. I brought this up the other day, actually, and people were like, people were like oh, I only just realised that. Like, I'm not saying I'm a genius, but, like, I'm not saying I'm a genius, I'm saying other people are fucking thick. <laughs> boom, boom, here come the Dislike Brigade. I just dabbed then as well, and in actual real life, I dabbed. Somebody kill me. So I'd like to see things like that, and I'd like to see officers change allegiance to factions they don't actually fight for. Uh, move sets and such. Um, mainly. Oh, this should be a fucking laugh, shouldn't it? Jesus Christ! Like, <laughs> right. I'm I'm gonna try and not pause so much. I mean, we're not even halfway through. Fucking hell. No more weapon switching. Well, I mean, they did do that, so, you know, whatever. Because it's fucking wank. Agreed. Uh, if you had every character with their own playstyle... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You could inject some real personality into the moves. Uh, Which they actually went in the opposite way. I'm not, I'm not sure if they did this to troll me. They must have been fucking doing this for a joke. Like, I, I do mean Dinosaur Wars 9, obviously. I don't mean me talking about this. Just, <sighs> fucking hell. Uh, Sun Shang Xiang, I mentioned her many times already, but you could incorporate bow attacks. I mean, she does have two bow attacks now. Oh, wait, she already had that in her, you know, Dinosaur Wars 8 moveset anyway. Oh, no. They actually, they actually, something I was going to actually praise them for, you know, her R1 circle, um, you know, having a bow attack, you know, thought, oh, wow, they actually did that. But then 
I realised in Dinosaur Wars 8 she actually has more bow attacks. Fucking hell. Because they already seem to love to do that over Mesu, so, you know. And grow high to fall down ill and the like. Uh, I don't think I've actually uh, played as grow high. I refuse to play as those uh, shooting spears because, you know, realism. Although, yes, don't get angry with that argument. I, I do know it is a, just a new you know, uh just the slip of the tongue you know you get asked in an interview why you're making a shitty business decision which pisses off loads of your fans you got to make something suitable haven't you so you know clo uh, realism for having cloned movesets and weapons is your answer although it's now basically a meme um hideaki and yoshiaki from sengoku basara comes to mind with, with these fucking wacky movesets, so it'd be great to see things like that, because uh, currently anybody can wield any weapon and it looks fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Looks stupid. Still is stupid. I mean, <sighs> Dung Ai got a great axe, Guan Yin Ping and Lu Su fight the same as Pang De, who in turn fights like Shahudan from Dynasty Warriors 6. Just... Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, more attacks. It's getting a bit stale now. I, I mean, I like the current current moves, but I think you could do some more. Uh... <laughs> See? I, I'm now, I was making the argument I am now making now, two years ago. A new combo string. So it would, it worked like it does now, except you'd hold R1, and then you'd have... Predicted the trigger system. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I even said the button. I mean, Jesus Christ. ...have a different set of attacks. I think that would, that would work. Another thing would be to um, press square and then R1. So, in, so if you ever played Warriors Orochi 1 or 2, technique characters would have a different move on one of their attacks if you pressed R1 instead of triangle. So I think that could that could probably work. Uh, everyone should have a grapple attack as a countermeasure against officers that always block. So, uh, no, we didn't get that. However, the purpose of the triangle attack sort of is that in a way, I mean, it's supposed to break guard, although, you know, on some movesets there is hit detection, which is, you know, wrong. So it doesn't actually break guard, or, like, the guard break is so short that when you try and do a follow-up, they're immediately blocking. Or it just doesn't work like that. It's... <sighs> Whatever. Because it's fucking dumb. Just put an eye out there. Um, yes, it is dumb. Improved grapple attacks as well. So, so when you actually, I will give them this. You're in a mob, and you're aiming right at the officer. You don't randomly pick a fucking troop instead. I have noticed that in Dynasty Wars Nine, actually, specifically with characters like uh, Sun Shang Shang, because she's the most no noticeable one. So when you do her uh, missile attack, obviously you do. You know, your continuous bit, and then you have the grapple attack at the end. I've noticed that it, uh, nine times out of ten, it will pick an officer over a peon. So you know, I will give them that. Because that is that is fucking dumb, especially with Musu attacks. Oh yeah, I've just wasted one <laughs> Musu Yolo bar of my three for killing a peon that you could hit in one. You could kill in one hit. It's whatever. Uh, counter attacks to return. Because some officers relentlessly attack you and you can't do anything about it. I suppose that was why aerial masseuse were added. Because if you're in the air, you can't do anything. And that's your sort of way of getting at it. But whatever. I should mention, so counter-attacks, yeah, they are back. However, you know, it's that quick-time bullshit which gives you, you know, seemingly forever to counter-attack them. I, I did mean, you know, sort of the actual skill based one you know in Dynasty Warriors 3 to well sorry 4 to 5 you know the one which you actually 
you know, you you were left open if you got your counter attack wrong or your parry wrong. The, you know, that was good. It punished you for being shit. It was a learning experience. It sort of made you learn that um, officer, enemy officers do have certain behaviours and things like that. And, you know, you got a decent reward for being able to counterattack. But whatever. And then, uh, obviously, air missiles. You're not actually sort of uh, able to uh, do it in the way I say in this video. Because you have, you know, the one unified uh, Maso bar. So, if it's not full, you can't use your Maso. Which is, you know, incredibly bad, I think. Uh, officers that changed weapons in eight empires, except for Sun Xuan, should revert to their old weapons. Uh, uh, Lian Shi didn't. Deng Ai didn't. Uh, Lu Shan did, I'll give him that. Uh, Sun Xuan didn't. No, sorry. Yes, no, yeah. I did say except for Sun Xuan, but I mean, he did and simultaneously didn't change weapons. If you know what I mean, he he has a he's a Sai Tai clone, but he uses the weapon model from Dynasty Warriors Eight Empires, which in turn is technically his Dynasty Warriors Four weapon. Uh, they don't they don't fit them at all. They're just sashayed on for the fuck of it. At least with the officer changes in Seven Empires, that at least sort of fitted. Uh, Simashi changed to a similar weapon, Dong Zhua changed to bombs, which he already uses in his, in his masseuse anyway. Um, just just a joke, in Jim Sterling's video, he says uh, Dong Zhuo changes to a bomb on a chain, which w I would have actually enjoyed. If if they made the compromise, he went back to his Dinosaur 7 weapon, and his 8 weapon, you know, a bomb, a bomb on a chain, that would be, you know, top tier fucking stupid weapons. I, I would fucking love it. If, it. if he attacked and it exploded with every attack and you did a little bit of damage to yourself, I would enjoy that. I really would. One guy changed the boat, which fits, it, fits his role at Chirby, uh, sort of. And, well, there's just no need for him to change because everyone was a unique. Case in point. Uh, Lian Shi, in, in particular, doesn't fit because, to quote, to contrast her with the other Wu ladies, she was designed to be the adult character. Her facial features and voluptuous body were designed with facial features. What the fuck does that mean? Hopes to personify her as the most matured female in the cast to make up for a lack of military training. They decided to decided. Excuse me to associate her with the crossbow. You see what I mean? I, I will argue this until the day I die. There was nothing wrong with the crossbow. She needed a few more attacks. Maybe you could make her a bit clumsy or something. Or, you know, just give her, like, some attacks where she looks, like, really desperate and stuff like that. Like, that's why I liked her R1 Maso because it gave her the healing reins. Oh, the crossbow was bad, but... Oh, I didn't like the character because she used the crossbow and the crossbow was bad. But then, like, if you don't like the character... Who who gives a shit? Or you don't like a character in a game which has, you know, 80-odd characters. I'm talking about Dinosaur Wars 8 here, but still. Just, oh, I don't like a character in a character that has a, a thing that has 80 characters. So, there are, you know, 79 other characters to play as. So why should they change the weapon for the character you don't like just so you can play as them when people do like that character and do like that weapon? <sighs> See, this is the problem Koei has. They change weapons for characters that people like and then they piss them off. And then people are like, oh, I didn't like that character, now I'll play as them. Well, yeah, people who did like that character aren't going to fucking play as them now, are they? Case in point with Leanne Sher. She doesn't fit with the fucking Mandarin duck hooks. If you're gonna change a character's weapon, give him give that fucking weapon to a new character. Instead of changing the old one. That's why people enjoy Samurai Warriors more than Dynasty Warriors, because they don't change the weapons. 
other than Masamune, he changed within one game, one main game. And Oichi, they changed her because they changed the whole character. Like, they made her older because it fitted with the story. Like, what you don't get is Oichi is a child in the first two games with uh, Nagamasa, who is also very young. And then they made Katsuie playable, who's an older guy. So you're basically having an older guy go out with a child. So that is why they had to change Uichi, and they just did it to make her older and more mature. But, you know, whatever. People don't see things like that. And now she's some martial arts fucking kung fu master. And not to mention that moveset is fucking dreadful. It's fucking horrible. Uh, Some people don't agree with that, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, some... Um, yeah, one of my friends, X the Master X, thinks that it's the best move set. Don't agree, but whatever. It is. It's so bad that I want to be violently ill whenever I hear that, or use that move set even. I don't know why I hear that. Uh, Liu Shan as well. Uh, quote: Since developers strove to perceive him to not be as strong as his father, he wields the easier to use rapier for his weapon of choice. His weapon of choice is meant to mirror his father's heavier dual swords. Why he has fucking workman's bench is beyond me, but whatever. Uh, other changes. Uh, Ponda to switch to the dual hellbirds again. It didn't. The mace is a good weapon. I'm not gonna, not gonna bring that down. It is a good weapon, but it doesn't suit him, and it never will. I think it's more suited to a primitive barbarian character, so somebody like Zhang Fei, probably. But not Zhang Fei, obviously. <laughs> well, I mean, sort of close, in, sort of in the same area. You know, Guan Yin Ping, they made her look like the wild woman. Which, you know, I'll, I'll give them that. They did make her fit, with, fit it a bit more than Pong fucking Duh. Well, I suppose Pong Duh's design in 9 is a bit more... In line with it. Still doesn't suit him though, does it? He just looks so stupid. Uh, not a man dressed in head to toe in the sickest armour in the game. Gan Ning. The flail doesn't really suit him either, but su- he's supposed to be a pirate. And what weapons do pirates use? Just putting that out there. Sorry, that, that was me banging on my desk. Uh, but in- <laughs> Why did I even keep that in? Jesus Christ. In all honesty, I feel kind of bad if he did change weapon again. Because he's been passed around so many times you think he was the school hamster. And s- Still Wu's second favourite character according to Western fans, so... You know, I'll give him that. People are very, very tolerant. Soon we'll find him a dead behind a bookcase if he changes again. So, back on topic, I'd like to see him with a sword or daggers. Or, uh, well, give the flail to somebody else again. Probably a new character. <laughs> Well, technically, he did go to a new character, Dong Bai, but she's not playable. Yet. Other stuff. Uh, Difficulty, I think changing the weapons so they're fixed to the characters can help Koei balance the game properly. Instead of everyone using the Hellbird, and by that I mean players using the Hellbird on every character, which is fucking overpowered. Now, I mean, technically, Koei did change the difficulty for the worst. Uh, they made it one of the easiest games I've ever played. I mean, Lubu doesn't kill your ass. Like, you know, like... He doesn't go through butter like a hot knife through you at Hulao Gate anymore. You can just... You can tank him, essentially. It's, it's down to, the you know, the item system as well. But still, he... Um, in the old games, he was unstaggerable, whereas in this one, the you hold the attack button and he, you know, you knock him down, and you just kill his ass that way. You can juggle him, which is the most disappointing thing ever. Ultimate difficulty isn't actually a challenge, though, is it? I mean, enemies do a lot of damage and they take a lot of damage. 
but they're actually, in fact, less aggressive than they are on hard difficulty. I will uh, still keep by that point. Dungeon Warriors 9, it's got even, gotten even worse. Like, on Chaos, you can be over-leveled. Uh, you can fight enemies, like, 10 levels below you, and they'll still take hits like a motherfucker. Like, th they tank damage so badly. As it, to compensate the mass damage they can do. So to make it more difficult and not making enemies damage sponges, I'd like to seem to change it so there's more enemy types with different methods of attacking. So sort of in the way that Killing Floor 2 does it, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, more enemy types with different methods of attacking and not just this one hit kill bullshit because you've had the displeasure of playing as Yuan Shao. Uh, um, so, uh, some things there. They, they did change the enemy AI in a little way in terms of they do, you know, different attacks because, you know, we've now got the roll so they literally roll out of your way. And um, it's actually a point I bring up in a speedrun video I'm in with uh, somebody I've already mentioned, X the Master X. I'm in his video on which he does a Zushu speedrun. I'm also featured with Shadowrunner. Um, talk about it in there. The audio is not um, the best mixed, just like, you know, in this video. Um, I bring up the point there is a feature in Dinosaur Wars 9. It's also in... Borderlands 2, it's called health gating. So it's a basically you can't be killed in one hit. You will survive with uh, I don't know what it is in Dinosaurs 9. I think it's like one health or whatever. So if you get hit with one thing, you will still stay alive. However, uh, your next hit will is a different de definite death. Sorry, get my words tied. Um, at least I think that's the thing. It's when we were watching um the master fight siren as sushu on chaos and there were several times where he'd be on full health and then go to a sliver so that was you know quite funny i'm pretty sure it's a feature though which you know i'll, I'll give him that can be one hit killed somebody will probably come along oh you can be one hit killed i i fought lubu don't care not why I, not sure why i think it might but there we go Another thing that could help with the game is fixing elements to characters, thus removing the flash slash induction explosion combo. I mean, technically they did that with the, uh, I can't remember what it's, unique action skill. They will have uh, different elements. I'm not sure if you get the benefits from though, those though. So uh, nobody will really know because you can't remove the elements from them in the first place. So the over... So the skill that oh, I'm trying to think of a way of putting it. So the gems have one skill that increases the overall character's performance. So for for wind, it's you get increased attack speed. So because you can't remove that element from the character's unique skill, we'll never know if that character's attack speed is actually less than it should be, is what I'm trying to say. Which makes the game incredibly easy. Uh, online, I'd like to see him expand it to four players. <sighs> no multiplayer at all. They actually removed it completely. So, you know, good one. Co-op. And with that, not failing battle if someone dies, especially if they're the commander. But have people who've died as spectators. So you can still carry on seeing the uh, seeing the the remaining people alive. For the extra mode uh, that they seem to love to add in the games now, ambition. No extra mode and free mode was tacked on because literally every character you play as is just a spectator, and free mode turns out it's not so free because you're limited to the battles you can do as well, as in. You can't just roam China and just fight people. I mean, you can just do that between missions anyway, but there's no, there's always a mission active, so it's not so free, which is, you know, a bit shit. 
For, you know, if it was an actual free mode, you could go to any of the... You could go to any of the main three kingdoms and just, you know, walk around, accept a mission, be on their side, whatever. So, you know, uh, Samurai, Warrior, uh, Samurai Warriors Chronicles in a nutshell. Mission mode is still pretty good idea. But I think customising the castle would be quite good. And then using that castle as a basis for a tower defence type mode. Similar to the some of the raid type battles in free mode in eight empires, so where you defend the two bases, except you'd be able to pick who you have with you. That is always a feature that um, people always talk about: Dynasty Warriors, Seven Empires, and Eight Empires. Oh, they're the same game. That is one feature they will always miss out from Dynasty Warriors Eight Empires, which I think makes it a better game. It Dynasty Warriors Eight Empires is actually pretty good. Like, I think it's better than Four Empires. Well, sorry. Samurai Warriors Four Empires. Like, people people give me shit over that, but I honestly do think that. Like, okay, it's not the best, you know, Empires game. You know, Dynasty Warriors, you know, Five Empires is probably better, but it is, it is pretty good. I'll give it that. Samurai Warriors Four Empires, though, on the other hand, is just a joke. It gives the illusion of actually being good. You know, that's why so many people like it. There's uh, so many factors that uh, make the game a lot more difficult. It streamlines you into having to play the game a certain way just to sort of get through it, and that really fucks me off. Yeah, it gives you the illusion of free choice, is what I'm saying. Not, well, whenever I've done it, I, get, I always get the most useless fucking AI. I always get fucking Pang Kong or some shit. Uh, and you could do that online as well, so that'd be a fucking laugh riot. Uh, to finally round off this magnum opus of a video that I'm sure you're, you know, well, well interested in listening to. I am decent self-awareness now. Give me, give myself that. Uh, this isn't so much an idea, but a feeling. I believe that Koei has uh, be. Oh, well, I believe that because they've made that statement, that this is. Uh, that there's going to be a big announcement and they're making some quite big changes I think that the next game won't actually be called Dynasty Warriors 9 you know this is a choice they should have actually gone for uh, like honestly that the amount of backlash they've got for uh, making the game open world like this this would have been a better choice just saying I think it will just be a reboot of some sort and it will be called Dynasty Warriors or Shin San Goku Masu as it were just a thought but could be wrong might not be so here we are at the end i may do some more of these on samurai warriors and the like depending on how well this goes uh, let me know what you think and uh let me know what you'd like to see next time's tomorrow's game uh, thanks good night although it's uh, 10 48 and uh praise the gravy as one of my subs said cheers bye Right, the rest of the video is actually the rest of the battle, so we will uh, stop that there. Right, let's move on to the next one. I probably won't respond as heavily this time, but, you know, whatever. Yo, it's time for another one of these videos. I, uh, I spoil you, don't I? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, because my last video was the first time doing anything like that, I was uh, pretty eager to get it out, so I missed a few things. So here we go. Some Back when I didn't give a shit, and still don't. More ideas, hopefully I won't fucking forget anything this time. Uh, regarding story mode... I still did, but I didn't bother to do it. I didn't bother to do any more. Again, uh, a few things I forgot. Uh, any character that's in a battle should be playable unless the battle requires certain characters to retreat. Uh, the characters in the battle should play the stage slightly differently. Like they they did that but they made everyone the same. Everyone has the same story, which is disappointing. In A if you uh, if you played Guandu, which is one of my favourite stages, uh, for Wei, if you played as Yue Jean, uh, you defended the main camp and Kao Kao. Well, so it's over. Instead of attacking Bai Ma and Yan Jin, uh, also Nan territory for Wu, you played as Lu Meng and you do the sneak attack around 
around those set of bases where Zhou Yu um, protects the base and draws everyone in. I think things like that would be pretty cool. Uh, none of this spawn in the same place shit. <laughs> yeah, none of this spawn in the same base shit. Yeah, we they do that all the time. This is stupid. Uh, speaking of which, replace the officers in the stage that you play as. So, uh, example, I did a video the other day of Eight Empires, the Yellow Turban Rebellion, and I was going to do it as Sun Jian, but he already appears in that stage. So you have two of the same character. It's fucking lazy. Just, just put some effort in. Uh, speaking of lazy, lazy. So. That's pretty funny. Um, that's actually something they do in Warriors or actually three. So if you play, so Momoji says, oh, I don't know what why I said that. If Momoji is a character in a certain stage, if you pick her, she will be replaced with you know Shrine Maiden or something like that. I'm literally just picking one castle as the example there. But yeah, so if you pick a certain character, they will be replaced, which is you know good. The, uh, the inevitable topic of English dubs. Uh, they should have them. End of. Uh, the games are known for being mindless fun, and the English dubs add to that, don't they? And who can forget classic lines like these? <laughs> I will destroy them all! No, it can't be over you! That is the third time I've used that. <laughs> I'll destroy them all clip. I think I used it in the English dubs video. I've also used it in. Uh, the I can't remember what you want to call them. The video where uh, we are number one video. It's like the fourth clip or something. Get. Enemy officer defeated. I feel that um, just because just to have Japanese takes some of the fun away. Uh, now there's people that will come out and say, but the Japanese sounds better, which is a lie because that well it is actually true in Dynasty Wars 9 because you know they went to cut costs because you know you got to you got to cut costs and do it on such a short notice because you're already getting slammed for the game being open world you're already getting slammed for the game having clones and shitty weapon choices and you know people aren't exactly happy Having no dubs would make sure people never come back to the series or don't buy it in the first place. And you already know the game's going to be a stinker, so you you know you make your dubs as cheap as possible, so you don't lose as much money as you you were going to. So you know you hire actors, you know actual actors, so you know not voice actors because they cost money. I don't even know where I was going with this. It's an opinion and not fact. Oh yeah, the, the dubs actually being shit. So the dubs were incredibly bad this time. They had no direction. Just whatever. I'm not sure why I'm doing basically a mini review at this point. And the other, things, the other thing is they don't even bother to translate properly. Nearly everyone says the same thing when they defeat an officer in Japanese. And yet the English translation is different. Take shu! tari! Is what they say. A better version for my uh, friends on uh, the Discord server. For everyone, like Zhong Hui says whatever it is in Japanese. Take show, understood, Tari. I'm not doing the impression of that. I can say it, but I'm not gonna. And I'm not gonna do it again. Yeah, in English, it's like four fucking lines of of dialogue. Like I don't know if that's actually true. I know the Chinese; they do say something different. But, you know, the, the I think the Chinese is the same, so I presume the Japanese is the same. I haven't actually used Japanese dubs because, because the English dub is there, I use it. Whereas I basically only use the Japanese dub if I don't have a choice. I still prefer English dubs, though. Like, it's it's just, I like to know that, 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 sorry. I like to know that that is what the characters are actually saying. In the game, and they actually say that they don't seem to know what they're actually saying. They just get given the line and then say it. No spell checker required. They might as well have used fucking Google Translate. F fucking paragraph of dialogue when he says like three words. It's fucking bullshit. Just, just fucking stop taking the piss out of us. It's like.
Senran Kagura Estival Versus did the same. They all fucking land and say their name, and the and the fucking translation is off. It's like they all say the same thing. We go, it's not. It's, it's fucking dumb. Uh, the other argument of saying that they should shouldn't have uh, English dubs is it's more authentic, which is fucking retarded because there's a problem with that, isn't there? And that's that the games are set in China, where you know, which has the largest. Uh, well, Chinese is the largest spoken language in the world. A couple of billion people speak that, whereas Japan, the only people who speak Japanese is in Japan. So you know, fuck off. Uh, I Solid reasoning. <laughs> Any a couple of thousand people speak it in Japan, so fuck off. I mean, that's true. Um, there's more people that speak English. There's like 1.7 billion. Oh, we. Yeah, it's more fun, more authentic. It's more probably be more authentic if they spoke fucking English. I hope they'll add English dubs. I mean, they said they were going to in eight empires, as well as opposed to seven empires where. They said right off the bat it would just be in Japanese. So. Actually, when I said I wasn't going to cover Dynasty Warriors game, I did actually spread that out, that they were so disorganised, they thought Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires was going to have English dubs, and it didn't. How how are you not like aware that your company isn't making dubs? Like your, It was uh, Koei Tecmo Europe that did this, and they're the people that fucking liaise with the voice actors and stuff and with the other side of the company to get people to do english dubs and you didn't know that that wasn't fucking happening <laughs> just how are you that fucking incompetent well i mean i i sort of get it because you know dinosaur Wars nine happened but still although well you could say they did actually add an english voice that voice for now Tora in Dead or Alive last round when she's never had one before so who knows yeah but this is that is Tecmo Koei not Koei Tecmo so Tecmo actually made the decision to do that which um I find very strange uh, Tecmo Koei also the company that made Neo whereas Koei Tecmo are you know the ones that keep making these fucking stupid ass decisions but you know whatever i like to see it but... uh regarding the previous video where i said every faction should have a story uh i've got some ideas from uh hype although hypothetical routes that diverge may not be possible so just extra stages after their final historical battle uh, would probably be the case here this would be a fucking bloodbath wouldn't it well, the... yeah whatever um I'll briefly cover who the playable characters would be. Um, this is assuming they'll get added. Uh, Yuan Shao, you'd have Yuan Shao, obviously, or Yuan Shao. I'm, I'm just doing whichever last Dynasty Warriors game I played for, for the uh, pronunciations. Uh, Zenji, Zhang He, Shen Yu, and Guo Jie. Well, those two for the early stages only. Uh, Wen Cho and Yan Liang would be playables. Uh, it fits. Shunyo and uh, Grogia are not featured at all. Uh, well, I mean, Grogia isn't even mentioned that he used to fight for the Yuans. But, um, you know, it is, it is there in the Three Kingdoms history that he used to do it. And uh, Shun, Shunyo as well. Was it Shun... I don't know if it's Shunyo or, or Shunyu, but whatever. Oh, it's out, Guandu, and then goes on to attack an alliance with Sunsa and Liu Bei. Forcing him to retreat and killing Liu Bei for deserting him. Then faces the combined... Deserting him? That's almost as bad as some people calling people, you know, retardeds. But, you know, whatever. I'm not going to stop people's uh, bad pronunciation, even if it is myself. Face the forces of Zhang Lu and Liu Zhang in the west. The final battle could be against Sun Tzu again, but at Chi Bi. Uh, Dong Zhua. Dong Zhua. Uh, Zhang Liao, Li Jue, Hua Xiong, Jia Xu, Lu Bu, Diao. Um, Jia Xu isn't featured on Dong Zhuo at all, I'm pretty sure. I've never come across him. He uh, He's not very important to the story at all. Most of your... I think most of Dong Zhuo's story was with uh, generics and Dong Bai. Uh, Dong Bai... Um, whatever. 
Don't matter. Hua Shong's not even featured that much. I mean, he's there a bit. But, you know, I was right about one thing. So, you know, tally one up to me. Chan and Sun Jian uh, be playable for the hypothetical route. After completing the main story, you'd unlock would unlock you the chance to recruit Sun Jian to his forces like Dong Zhua wanted to in the book. I did cover some of this in my uh, last video. Uh, defeating the alliance at Hulai Gate to be defeated by the... Yeah, defeating the alliance at Hulai Gate, he defeated the surrounding warlords starting with Ma Teng in Liang. He then attacks both Yuan Shao and Cao Cao Guangdu. Uh, the final battle will be a different version of his assassination that would put him against Sun Jian, Lu Bu and Diao Chan and the remnants of allied forces. Uh, Nan Man, uh, Meng Hua, Zhu Rong, Guan Sua, and Bao. I can't even fucking pronounce her last name. Bao Son Yang. It's not what I'm gonna. But Guan Sua's wife. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Pointing right at the tits. You know, I I'll give her um, that her. It's one of the things I brought up earlier. Oh, I didn't like her as a character. I mean, I don't like her as a character, but saying they made her a more mature character just because you don't like her like why is that even a thing people liked her like i don't but who gives a shit um the move set she has in eight is fucking broken as well like it's really really strong so you know i'll give her that and you know in in that picture right there she's all right to look at but, I mean, the Eiffel Tower's are right to look at. It doesn't mean you stick your knob in it, though, does it? Or wank over it, even. Uh, the, the one Japanese fans seem to love that everyone else fucking hates. And I yeah, I mean, I'm technically wrong there, but whatever. Hate her as well. At, uh, at Nanjong, they capture Guan Sua and his wife, and they stay... <laughs> I, I love that joke. I like it, and I can't pronounce for shit. They have their own volition, because then you don't have to include those two in the shoe story, because they fucking have nothing. True. I mean, I, I liked in 9 how they're not even in ending stages, which they were sort of sashayed on in 7 and 8, but there we go. Uh, th and then their story would play out like um, 3XL and 4, where they, where they like search out people that invaded their land and then accidentally fucking destroy the other factions. They start with, uh, they start with Wei, I don't know why. No, they start with what are you doing? Uh, yellow turbans, Zhang Jiao and Zuo Se, uh, plus converted and brainwashed generals, so like Cao Cao, Liu Bei, Sun Jian, and uh, any of their subordinates. That'd be that'd be quite a good way to do it instead of just. I still I still believe that would be a really good way of doing it. it it's essentially the same as Dinosaur Wars Five, where at the end you get you know Sun Jian and. Uh, Sao Tsai and Lu Bei, you know, it'd be cool. Just do it. Having, like in 4, you had anybody with Zhang in their name fight for you, for some reason. Uh, yeah, the Yellow Turban Rebellion, you uh, brainwash one of those three officers and they join you, then it play out like uh, 3XL and 4 again, because I have no ideas. Um, have that like a comical story like in Yoshimoto's and Samurai Warriors sort of because he always goes on about the way of peace and we all just think he's a fucking hippie and whatnot. Uh, finally Lubu uh, just have it like it was in 8XL although you could have two new hypothetical routes based on his and Diao Chan's stories from Dynasty Warriors 6 uh, which are the only two good things from that game I, uh, I might actually play for those. I will stand by that I say, um, the, well, I wouldn't say they were the two only good things. I believe Sun Jian's story in 6 is very good as well, uh, which I've actually written into my review, which uh, is a bit weird. There are... My opinion on Dungeon Warrior 6 has actually changed. I think it's... There's a lot more stuff in that game that people than people actually give... Uh, give it shit for i still believe it's the worst warriors game uh, well actually my opinion has changed it's not the only worst warriors game i will tie seven uh, sorry i will tie eight with six for the title of worst warriors game they're worst for the uh, for different reasons but you know six had stuff that 
was good, but also had the worst stuff in the game as well. I mean, the clones are 99% the same, or even 100% in the same in the same uh, in some cases. Whereas it actually had uh, the promise of, um, you know, decent character stories like the the characterization of each of the characters across the stories was the best because they actually spent time and money on cutscenes whereas opposed to you know Dungeons Wars 9 which everything is done in real time and there's no personality injected to, into it at all because you know the animators can be bothered I say the animators can be bothered the animators are told they can't spend time on it so you know whatever so pretty good uh, final thought on the story mode. I would like uh, stages like Dong Zhua Lives again as sort of a bonus. Uh, you don't have to have it as like canon, but it'd be just like bonus stage. Uh, like if you talk to officers or troops in the camps before battle and they, they say a certain thing, it activates like a flag. And then if you get all of them, you unlock the stage. Uh, they can say stuff like, I heard uh, Lu Bu didn't kill the real Dong Zhua. I heard a rumour he went into hiding. Shit like that. Uh, I don't know what you will think about that, but I think that would be quite cool. Because in 4, those were like the best stages. But especially the shoe one, because that's fucking hard. If you did that on Expert... I still think those are, those three stages are probably the, some of the best ones they've ever done. Um, in terms of just... Um, just like the feel of them is so... I don't know, they're so weird. They, they're they also the three most unique stages. So for Shu, um, I'm only mentioning this because I'll probably never mention it again unless I do a video on each of the stages or if people want me to uh, after this. So f for Shu, um, it has the unique property of whoever you play as is the commander of the stage. And then... Um, yeah, you are literally the only force, and it's quite cool that the v defeat conditions uh, are, you know, the two camps full. It's the only stage in the game to do that. Uh, Wu is the only stage where you have to escort uh, troops to... Uh, escort supply troops to the thing, and then you win when a certain amount gets over as well as Nan Man joining them for seemingly no reason. It's also pretty cool because it's the the one stage where you can kill everybody and then it'll still carry on. And then for Wei, it is the only stage in the game where there are no gate captains at all. At least I think it is. There's, yeah, there's no gate captains in that at all, which is pretty weird because you can have your whole forces wiped out, so, you know, Satsai will die quite easily. But, yeah, those are the three unique things about those stages. Uh, you'd, f like, you'd bound to fucking lose. Or maybe not, but I don't know. Uh, other non-story related stuff. Uh can we just appreciate how, how lazy I was to not even get a full-length track of Great Red Spirit. I don't really poor editing, not even like structured video or anything. I mean, I'm no better doing this, but you know, whatever. A PC port makes some effort. Uh, PC players aren't really the kind of people you want to piss off. Turns out I was wrong in terms of, um, yeah, I know. So I think this was probably done before Total Biscuit did a video on uh, Let's Not Play Tecmo Koei's port. It, tu it turns out you can release a port as shit as you want and people still defend it. Oh, the game doesn't play correctly, but, you know, it's Koei Tecmo. I mean, Jim Sterling is actually one of these people. He recommends the PC port of Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends just on the basis that it's a Dynasty Warriors game. And people say, oh, Jim Sterling's not wrong about anything. That is r something he's wrong about. I wouldn't recommend that to my enemies. But, you know, there's still people that go out and fucking torrent it. So, you know. Oh, and then make money off YouTube doing it. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad the adpocalypse hit these fucking cunts. And if you're watching this, you are a cunt. You paedophile. And, and I don't even say that lightly. I mean, they are actually a paedophile. But whatever. I'm only saying this because I'm drunk. I wouldn't say it otherwise. But, yeah, so it turns out you can... Um, treat PC players of these games as bad as you want and they will still take it 
So um, it was nice they did actually put effort into the PC port as well. I think it's a bit better than the previous ones from what I've heard. Uh, shame they were so unorganised that they couldn't even get the Chinese dubs in order. So they had to be removed. And then that pissed a lot of people off. And I'm not even sure if they've been put back in the game. Um, the files have actually been removed as well, which I find hilarious. I mean, this is a company that's so unorganised, they couldn't even liaise with the company that made the PC port, which is a different company, and then get your Chinese voices removed. So, you know, good one. Good one, Tecmo Koei. Or Koei Tecmo, even. Um, I'm, not I'm not really sure what, what went wrong, really. Like, all the games prior to 8 on PC looked better. Um... Yeah, look better than the console counterparts. Four Hyper looks like... Except for Warriors RPG um, Z, which uh, actually looks better on P uh, PS3. That is like the one exception, I think. Ridiculously good compared to... Oh, and Samurai Warriors 2, but that is also because it got a remaster, but, you know, whatever. PS2 version. And that is one of the only games that allows you to have an odd number on anti-aliasing. You can have 17 times. It's actually anti scopic filtering, but you know, whatever. It's anti aliasing. Or 15 times or whatever, which I've never seen in any any other game. So I don't know where he went wrong. And there's not really uh, an excuse for shit PC ports anymore, is there? Like, PS4s are closer to PC than, than ever, so it should be just easy. Yeah, they, they fucking port the PS3 version. I don't get. Like, what? Why the fuck did you do that? Like, you're just wasting money there. Yeah? Um, weapon models, uh, I think the third weapon, so the ones that appear in all the fucking renders and artwork and art, that should be the first weapon. And then go from there, just have like these fucking gnarly, badass weapons. Because no, no one uses tier 1 or 2 weapons, they just look like shit. Like, just just have them for generic officers, because they, they deserve nothing. They uh, actually went the opposite way for uh, Dinosaur Wars 9. In a way, so the everyone starts with a tier one weapon, and then there's one, uh, then there's an X weapon above that, and then there's the second tier weapons, and then an X tier above that, and then there's your actual weapon you want. However, with nine, because the way the game is made, you can literally just go out and get the coins to buy the epic weapon as it were and then find the materials for it and then buy it and then use that so I don't think anybody has ever actually used you know the actual intended weapon of the characters which is you know really really sad and I'm literally nitpicking here but it's it's true it's true oh it's nitpicking and well it doesn't mean that it's any less true does it it's when people call you you know a cuck or a beta or an SJW or you know fucking alt right or whatever whatever phrases either side of you know political debates put out it doesn't make you any less wrong does it oh you look like you smell of we well it doesn't make me any less wrong does it you know what I mean don't know why I use that as an example I, I know a guy that got called that you look like an junkie faggot it doesn't make me look any less wrong, though, does it? Uh, fourth and fifth weapons, or rare weapons, whatever you want to fucking call them, because they seem to change every game, uh, include... Yeah, if they include both, have the first one be gotten on hard, and then have... <sighs> well, they didn't even do that, did they? They made epic weapons, or fourth weapons, whichever you want to call them. They actually... They took a tier away for a start so fourth weapons are now the limit which in you know eight were actually you know just a findable weapon and then you had the unlockable but uh, they actually made it worse so people actually share those weapons now <laughs> christ i can't even believe uh, this this has gotten to a point where i'm actually i don't even want to continue but you know i'm gonna have to soldier on the second one be done on chaos. Oh. 
Yeah, because the, the sick weapons in AXL you could do on hard, which is fucking stupid. Because they were like ridiculously powerful weapons. So have the, have it on chaos be a bit more of a challenge. Uh, make make some people cry. Just be funny. Uh, when in the last video when I said about the return of counter attacks, uh, you don't even need to get new animations. I just thought um. You can just reuse the switch counter animation, and that's pretty good because it's um, yeah, it's got a wide range for m for quite a lot of them, and some and you get a bonus as well. So if you do that, that'd be uh, that'd be good. Can somebody confirm if they actually did that? I don't think they did. I um, I'm trying to think. I don't think many of the characters did, did they? Honestly, don't no. I th actually, I think for the twin rods they did. I think they Toshitsu does, but I'm not sure about any of the others. I'm, I mean, it's not really an attack I ever use in nine. You know, you can just overpower people. You you know, you can just charge up a flow attack, execute it, juggle them in the air before they can even do a counter. At you like even think about doing a counter attack, but whatever. Uh, possibly fix elements to characters, uh, so they have a preferred element that does bonus damage, sort of uh, balancing the game a bit. Uh, characters that have element dependent attacks, like Sun Shang and uh, Sai Tsai, uh, change the element according to what they're using, so change the, the rings of fire or poison mist or ice strike to, uh, to rain of fire arrows or thunder. So with Sai Tsai, you wouldn't. You wouldn't um, his first X attack. You could have fire arrows if you change your element to fire instead of ice, because it doesn't really make sense sometimes. Or, um, or in the case of some attacks, to change them completely, like they did with uh, Arslan, Warriors of Legend. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, because if you change your weapon, uh, I can't even remember what it's called, but if you change your weapon element, it does change the attacks for some of them. Uh, storm rushes to come back because uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, either have them available all the time against officers when you juggle them in the air for a certain combo, uh, or just keep them in the air for a certain amount of time, or you incorporate incorporate them into an element system. So if you use an element that beats the opponent, uh, you can use it. So like fire beats ice, ice beats lightning, and such and such. But ice doesn't beat lightning. Uh, more items and more skills, uh, providing a different way to play the game. Because currently, if you do uh, ultimate, it's just out damage the opponents. So for weapons, they actually removed all the um, skill system in entirely. Uh, there's no, you know, weapon attributes or anything like that. However, they did increase items, so you know, I'll give them that. Although they're not particularly useful. Um, most of them are like tiered ones, aren't they? So it's like uh, moderate increase to XP or you know minor increase to XP. So there's more items, but the, most of them do the same thing, which is, you know, really disappointing. It's not... Ri it's pretty shitty, really. You, ca you cannot tank that mode in any way. It's just fucking kill them before they kill you, really. And for example, like if you play as a defensive, uh, if you want to play defensive and use counter attacks, like Kai Ren, Siren even, is uh, is known for his defense. That is one thing I actually give Dynasty Warriors Nine. They uh, made defense an attribute on weapons, so technically you can out tank enemies but then that's uh, also due to the uh, RPG elements in the game where you uh, add points to whichever stat you want. Uh, defense does actually become a bit pointless. I think most people go for uh, character running speed so you know speed then attack and then Maso because you know the more Maso uh, attacks are really overpowered uh, one can just kill like 20 officers in one go, which is, you know, pretty ridiculous. 
to enable us to play play like defensive because he's uh, he's a bit of a ta he's he has he's like one of the most powerful fucking characters in the game and yet he's known for defense it doesn't really make sense uh, more aimable attacks like uh, Wang Yuanji's second X attack and uh, one of Juran's attacks where it sort of like zooms in over the shoulder uh, have that for yeah have that for ranged attacks or um, characters like Wen Young and um, uh, Zhao Yun if they like throw their spears or javelin or whatever yeah uh <laughs> Wen Young thrown a javelin Jesus Christ I remember when he used to have that weapon <laughs> and uh, improve it so you can single out the enemies you want because it, it, it it's very much in their infant stages isn't it with the aiming shit because it doesn't it never goes where you want just um can we can we just take a moment to remember that they implemented a bow system in Dynasty Wars 9 and did it really poorly can we just uh, take time to appreciate that so me saying they want I wanted to uh, them to improve the aiming system on attacks actually in the game you know in the main system of the game they didn't improve upon that nor did they improve upon a system where you actually need to do that whatever well, don't even okay. care so because if you change the camera settings, it doesn't change. It doesn't change that. I don't know why. Uh, add unique NPCs uh, such as Hua Xiong, Yan Liang, and Wen Cho. Well, they added one, so I'll give them that. Pretty, pretty funny. You know, they actually added Hua Xiong, so you know I was right about one thing. Koei did one thing right by my books. One, uh, you want Shu as well. Uh, if they do that. Oh, and you want shoe? <laughs> Holy shit, man! I am a genius. Ah, they can add them as DLC later, not that. <laughs> oh my god! Who, who, who's a genius? I called it. I called it. I'm approving of DLC, but or you can uh, make them playable in Extreme Legends. Just a thought. Uh, it makes a change from having all like the three different generic officers. They all look. They all look like the fucking same in the end. After you've played it for like two hundred hours, uh, don't remove any characters. Uh, but if they have to, uh, remove Zoe, sir, because. I mean, you are a real boring fuck. Sorry. Sorry. I know that you disapprove of swearing. Right. So I'll sort that. You are a boring f star star cunt. <laughs> oh my god, if I remake this video, which I, I'll probably do, I will I will actually uh, put his face over that, because I've managed to do that before. Um, if anybody wants a uh, reference for what film that is, it's called In The Loop. However, I recommend you watch The Thick Of It first, because uh, it's the same character, Peter Capaldi's... <coughs> excuse me, Peter Capaldi's character is the same in both. So yeah, it's really good. But yeah, uh, nice, nice that they actually uh, did that. They didn't remove characters. Although I would have preferred if they removed Zosa, because fucking hell. He is fucking boring. Um, they they took an extra stage away from Way Story Mode just to fight that fucking over-easy piss bag. He's... he's oh, I cannot get why they fucking re-added him. He's, you know what? Actually, do remove him. Just fucking remove him. And then you don't have, like... Fucking, fucking hate that guy. Uh, no duplicate stages as well. But if they have to, and we know they will, because they just fucking will. Although they managed it with Dynasty Warriors 5, they uh, they only reuse stages in the Extreme Legends expansion. Actually, I uh, this is something I disagree with. Uh, some stages I'm actually okay with. Um, after playing Dynasty Warriors 9, I'm and seven to a degree to a degree some of the stages i get so battle of so chuan uh, you know when you fight yuan shao or sorry yuan shu and shu gadan's rebellion do actually take place in the same you know battle which you know i i sort of get why they reuse that stage you probably need to say oh it took place in shu yeah so you know 
I agree with some stages, but you know, Tian Shui and Guan Chiu Qian and Wen Qin's rebellion taking place on the same stage. Don't agree with that. Place it, battles that took place in the same place. I agree. Battles that don't uh, need unique stages. They did add a shitload of new ones. Um, well, if they have to do that, at least have battles in similar areas, like Guan Chiu Qian and Wen Qin's Rebellion uses the same map as Tian Shui, despite them being on the opposite sides of China. Why? It's, it, and, and it was, and it's the same time of day as well. That fucking annoyed me. At least when they did it in uh, seven, it was it was in the evening. It used the same map as uh, Conquest of Wu, whatever the fucking stage called. Because that was in the morning. So it did look a bit different. And uh, don't do the fucking Samurai Warriors thing where they where they just change the mini map so it looks like a different stage. That, f that fucking annoyed me as well. Oh yeah, it's a different stage. Oh no, it's not. It's just that they've put the castle at the, the bottom left instead of the top right. Fuck that. Uh, if... If yeah, if they have to reuse stages, do the Dynasty Warriors 4 style of things, because that is that was probably the best way. Uh, cause as a kid, it took me a while to realise some stages were the same. Yeah, cut the stages up and add add and remove bits, so it wouldn't just be the whole same map. You would actually get new bits and uh, cut bits off. Uh, yeah, change the weather and the and the time of day, so it does look different. So then we don't think you're just lazy bastards. I think, I think that would probably work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I still agree with that. I mean, Dinosaurs 8 did um, change a few things. It's not very noticeable, hence why I can't think of the examples off the top of my head. But I think some... Uh, I think it's like some interiors of castles are different for some stages, but it's not really, you know, noticeable to for me to sort of give a shit. But you know what I mean. The majority of the stage is the same. Um, I think the sort of the outside perimeter is the same throughout the stage, whereas the some of the bits in the inside are different. Whereas when I'm talking about Dinosaur Wars 4, the actual perimeter of the stage is a lot different. You wouldn't piss as many people off, and it, it, it give a bit of life, a bit more life to the game, I think. So there we go. I think that is everything. Um, yeah, uh, this probably won't be the last of these videos. Uh, I plan to do one more on what characters they should add. So Never did, but nor do I care. I think I I think I just stopped caring because I started to think that they shouldn't have added more characters which are still still something I get will get behind. I mean I'll never get why they added Zhu Sheng other than you know we need a Wu character to add or Zhou Sang, I mean Jesus Christ. Uh, I better get my thinking cap on. And um, when they officially announce it, I will do news on uh, and what info they release uh, and give my thoughts on what characters they show. <laughs> they will inevitably release a character that I don't like. So I, I think none of the ca well, most of the characters they added I don't like, but swear, uh, they love to drip feed us stuff week by week. So uh, do stay tuned for that, or or don't. Uh, as always, thanks, and uh, praise the gravy. You know what, I might actually bring that back as a, uh, as a video. <laughs> as, no, as the ending to my videos. Praise the gravy. The weapon affinity of our style would be good for nine, blah blah blah. I agree with basically everything. And take out weapon switching. Oh, look at that, they didn't even do that. I did actually read these comments the other day, so... Pretty funny. Yeah. So there we go, that is, uh, what, nearly two hours of me whinging like a bastard complaining to my old videos. But, yeah, you know, it's, um, quite interesting. I needed a video, basically. Oh, look, oh my Josh. Funny that he's quit after Dynasty Warriors 9 clones, but, yeah, he went and platinum the game. So, you know, pick a side, Josh. <laughs> YOLO. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you did, um, yeah, let me know what you think. If you thought it was funny that I predicted that Hua Xiong and Yuan Shu would be DLC characters, 
Jesus Christ. I mean, I can't even believe that. But, <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you next time and praise the gravy.